But if you're 20 and want to go out to the bars every night and have friends and go on trips and see the world, then you don't, you shouldn't do what I'm doing. Like that's, yeah. that's not the lifestyle you want. <laughs> My focus is much more shifted towards sort of improving the care of the animals that I have. And as, as much as I want more animals, it's uh, sometimes nice to kind of pump the brakes a little bit and focus on the collection that we ha- that I have. It's that's a very reasonable <laughs> kind of a, a mindset you have there. Because uh, I don't know, have you ever kept tarantulas or scorpions or any inverts before? I have not, but you know, I had no? uh, Tom Ran on my podcast uh, a few years ago. Now I think it was like. I, 2019 or something and, and we kind of talked about the sort of the same snowball effect in the tarantula world that but it's probably even worse because it's easier in smaller enclosures and whatnot for the, in you know keeping tarantulas right yeah yeah we've talked about that a few times uh on this podcast just how uh addictive it can get and, and b- because they're so easy to take care of and they can also be very reclusive so you may get five tarantulas and not see them for weeks mm-hmm. so then you're like well, they're not. I don't really need to feed them or anything. You know, more than once or twice a month in some cases. So you end up getting more and get more, and before you know it, your basement looks like mine. <laughs> exactly. <But. laughs> yeah. Well, I, I just recently did a video on that concept of the, and it, it would work in the invert hob- hobby as well, where th- there's a, th- a fine line between you know engaging in the hobby, but also kind of slipping into a little bit of an addiction style of keeping, where mm-hmm. it, you end up. I talked about this effect that happens. It's sort of this tendency in humans. It's called the hedonic treadmill. And this is where we sort of return to a baseline happiness external or regardless of your external stimulus. So maybe you're at a seven out of 10 as far as your happiness goes. And then you want to buy a new animal. So you start to get that dopamine spike. You start to feel some pleasure and excitement. And the dopamine spike actually hits its peak before you purchase an animal. Then you purchase it, you bring an animal home, and you're kind of still excited, but then it starts to wane, and you return back to that sort of 7 out of 10. And now you've adjusted, Mm -hmm. and you've completely adapted to this new scenario of having an additional animal, and the only cure to that is going out and getting another animal. And it's actually a vicious cycle, and and there's there are ways around it, but if you're not if you're not paying attention to what you're doing, you may end up just continuously running on the treadmill, thinking that you're enjoying the hobby, but really you're just fulfilling that that treadmill and you're going to run into a scenario where you've run out of time and money because you have a basement full of animals. It's very true. I've, I've fallen into that trap, not just with like animals, like tarantulas and stuff, but it's just in in many aspects of my Mm -hmm. life. Don't have so much of a scientific kind of view at it. It, I, I, my mind, I guess it's a little more metaphorical. I always looked at it as uh, if you're painting and you're mixing colors on your palette, trying to come up with this amazing color and, and you do, it's very exciting. You're like, oh, this is awesome. Kind of like, you know, when I'm searching online, buying a new tarantula or scorpion or something. But as soon as you take that paint and you put it on the canvas, now it's just part of the background. Mm-hmm. Like it's no longer this amazing color on your palette. It's it's just a n- one color in a whole, you know, painting full of, of different shades of colors. It just loses that, that kind of excitement right away. Yeah, it's weird. It's, so, there's this excitement in the fantasy more than the actual reality. And and I think that's just mm-hmm. part of our human programming. And like you said, it's not just in reptiles. We're going to have that experience across the board. But it is something that can be dangerous if we're caring for, for animals. Yeah. I mean, we, I see that a lot. I have people reach out to me that are just overwhelmed uh, mm-hmm. because they got too many tarantulas too quickly. Uh, and and they're, it's not so much... It's not really expensive keeping tarantulas. I mean, you you just got to buy crickets every now and then to feed them. You know, other than that, they're they're pretty simple to take care of. But it's just the the time, and I think sometimes it's just that feeling of responsibility is overwhelming to some people. So you see a lot of people that just they come in hard and burn out fast. Mm-hmm. So they go from like no tarantulas, and then a year later they have a hundred tarantulas, and then six months or a year later they're selling all their tarantulas. Like I'm out of the hobby. I'm, I'm tired. But I couldn't imagine doing that with reptiles. I mean, I have four snakes, a day gecko, and a couple of leopard geckos. And that's like, I'm at my, like, people are like, hey, do you, I'll send you a snake. And I'm like, I don't want any more reptiles. Like, this <laughs> yeah. is a handful as it is. I spend like 80% of my time that I'm doing care and husbandry on my reptiles compared to, you know, 100 tarantulas. It's funny because people in the fish hobby, like people in the reptile hobby see the fish hobby as like the next level of 
of busyness because you're perpetually having to do stuff like water changes and feeding like every single day where with snakes you're not feeding you know maybe once a, every couple of weeks type thing so it, it, it is interesting and and like you said you can't imagine having that many animals or that many reptiles but many people do right they have these just ridiculously large collections and it's the same thing they get overwhelmed and inevitably see that post on craigslist or facebook or whatever i'm ditching everything someone come you know take my collection away from me because i can't handle this anymore i haven't bought a tarantula in i don't even know how many months now probably coming up on a year um, i have been lucky enough that some people are generous and will like dealers will send me some tarantulas uh to add to my collection or something like that but I'm, i've had to like kind of put my foot down in a lot of areas and be like I already have that species. I don't need another one. Like, I appreciate you wanting to send it to me, but that's, you know, there's, I don't need it, you know, and I don't want to just be a channel that's just constantly doing unboxings. Yeah. Cause like you said, I, I think that really feeds into that um, kind of mindset that the more of a, the more tarantulas you have, the better keeper you are. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, that's definitely not the case. And we've seen some very tragic things happen from people that had that mindset where they just had like mass deaths, they like half their collection or in a few instances, the entire collection ended up dying wow. uh, because they had so many tarantulas, they couldn't keep them, you know, in, in whatever room they originally were in and, you know, put them somewhere else that, you know, maybe like lost electricity or something in the middle of the winter and, and a bunch of them died. And it's, it's sad, heartbreaking, um, you know, and, and I think you see that or they'll, you know, they'll have an issue with their husbandry and, it, you know, they've only been keeping for a few months and, they didn't realize, like, if they only had a couple tarantulas, then they would have been uh, able to kind of identify that issue and resolve it. But they were so overwhelmed with the hundreds of species that that issue had been replicated so much by the time they realized there was an issue, there was already a wave of deaths kind of, you know, going through their collection. And it was too late to stop it. Right. And I've made a lot of videos and even mentioned it in the podcast a few times that, like, um, it's, it's not, that's not the case. You know, you're your worth and your value as a keeper is not determined by the amount of species you have. And essentially like, don't use me as an example. Like I'm a, a, a almost middle-aged man that, you know, owns his own house and has absolutely no social life. So like, you know, I have plenty of time to spend taking care of all these tarantulas. But if you're 20 and want to go out to the bars every night and have friends and go on trips and see the world, then you don't, you shouldn't do what I'm doing. Like that's, yeah. that's not the lifestyle you want. <laughs> yeah. And anybody who maintains a large collection properly gives that advice. It's like, cause there, there are many people who have huge collections that do just an amazing job caring for them. It's obviously not the norm. It's the, the, the more of the exception, but anyone who does care for them well, like you're saying, is just like, it's like a big warning, like, do not do this. Like you don't understand how much time I spend maintaining this in a healthy way. And like, you know, the chances of random kid being able to do that is probably pretty low.